Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. It's spring training year three today. Mike Soroka will make his debut. We'll get a first look at the number one prospect in baseball. It's Joe Michael. We're all very excited about him, along with the first draft pick of the series. It's Aaron Don, who will get a chance to show what he can do in center field. The first bit of this video's gameplay was streamed on the channel over the weekend if you'd like to see a couple games in full and a longer three hour view of the team. But I'll recap the stream and we're going to go beyond the stream in this video. We also brought up Darrell Ernais to play some shortstop because that's now a position that needs a little more depth and his defense is really intriguing. Our action today begins with the spring training opener and our first chance to see our new ace, Michael Soroka, who dealt with a torn Achilles that he then retore and made his comeback in this series with the Atlanta Braves. Hit free agency at 27 years old and was immediately my top target to go get a true established starting pitcher to add to this team. I think he fits into our long-term plan as well, only being 27 years old. So, Soroka has a skill set that's not all that flashy. He's not a huge strikeout guy, but he's supposed to keep the ball in the ballpark and just kind of give you more stable outcomes. Last year with the Braves, he had a 3.2 war and 6.4 strikeouts per 9 innings, which is on the low end. But .9 home runs per 9, 3.87 FIP. A lot to like there. We also brought in Christian Arroyo during a very quiet free agent period. Arroyo, his on base was down last year with Boston. I think it's going to bounce back with us. That's the hope anyway. But I think he's a well-rounded player that fits in well with this team. And we'll talk about him later. One player who immediately showed up and played well in spring training was Teoscar Hernandez. We signed him a year ago, and he still has two years on his contract. And we all know Seth Brown's been a huge player for us in this franchise. Base hit left center field. This one goes all the way to the fence, and he drives home Hernandez. Seth is now 32 years old, and with two years left until he hits free agency, there might be some trade rumors this year. Top of the second, Mike Soroka facing Hunter Renfro, who belts one to right center field. Over the head of Teoscar Hernandez, and that is a leadoff double. Next batter is Anthony Rendon, and with a 3-2 count, he waves wildly as Soroka picks up a strikeout using his changeup. Then with a full count to Luis Ringifo, he walks him, putting runners at the corners, and leaving the inning up to Keston Hira, who sends one past Seth Brown into right field. A run scores. First and third again with two down. Next, it's Max Stassi, and Soroka gets him on the inside corner. Strike three. I wanted to see Soroka throw three good innings here in his spring training debut. Top of the third, David Fletcher sneaks one through the middle. Taylor Ward's next, and with the runner going, he lines one into center, putting runners at the corners with nobody out. That brings up the great Mike Trout. One, two, Soroka gets him looking with a changeup over the middle. Two batters later, Soroka trying to end the inning, but Anthony Rendon gets a hold of one. And that's putting it lightly, 450 feet to left field. That's the 2019 Anthony Rendon with that swing. So it was a rough debut for Soroka, giving up the home run and just not having a very good three-inning outing. Teoscar Hernandez goes the other way on a 109 exit velocity single. And Seth Brown, this is sent up the middle and knocked down, but Brown able to beat out the throw. We get a couple aboard for Tyler Soderstrom, who showed up late last year at the big league level, did a really nice job for us. He should be an everyday player now. He draws the walk, and that gives Aaron Don a chance to do some damage. Bases loaded, 3-0. His first spring training appearance has him leave the bat on his shoulder for a four-pitch walk. He gets an RBI. Brings up Zach Geloff, the third baseman, who sends it into center, and Trout makes the play. 
Geloff and many other young players have a chance this spring training to grab a roster spot. And that's why I wasn't active in free agency. I want to see the young guys get a chance to make the roster. Luis Medina made some good starts for us last year. Gives up a very sharp single to Rengifo. And then comes back to strike out Keston Hira on a 97 mile per hour fastball. Max Stassi follows and he looks at strike three as well right down the middle. Medina is 25 years old, 69 overall. And I've liked a lot of what I've seen. And a starting rotation spot is up for grabs. Maybe a multi-inning bullpen roll. But I have really been intrigued. This is tapped right back to him. He'll make the play easily. He appeared in six games last year, allowing eight runs over 20 and one-third innings. That's a 3.54 ERA. Not bad. And a 3.64 FIP. The numbers were good in a small sample, and I like the start he got off to here in the spring. Bottom five, a couple hits already for Hernandez, and why not make it three? All of them to opposite field. Back to the pitching side of things, Luis Medina does miss low to Anthony Rendon after his big home run in his previous at-bat. He goes to first base, and then Medina comes back to strike out a Eugenio Suarez. Keston Hira follows, and the 1-1 is driven deep to left, down the line, fair and gone. Another long ball for the Angel offense was looking so good for Medina until that point, and if you give up a couple home runs in the spring, it's hard to really fix your numbers after that. Aaron Don gets a chance to hit and puts it in play for the first time in the spring, but a soft ground ball will retire him. We bring in Gunnar Hoagland next, and he's another young player that we've gotten to see a decent bit now, and there's a chance he ends up in our rotation. There is a lot of competition in this spring, and I feel like we're going to have more young guys playing in year three than at any point so far in the franchise. And here's Darrell Air Nice. A starting shortstop role could be up for grabs. And this is a ground ball to second base. Wasn't a great play, but they don't charge him with an error. That is a base hit for Air Nice. Hernandez up again. Three hits to opposite field, and then once he pulls it, that is going to be a ground out to end the inning. Let's take this into the top of the eighth inning. Gunnar Hoagland still out there. Line drive. Nice grab by Air Nice at short. He is our best defensive shortstop we have right now. Line drive at Hernandez, and his defense, you know, isn't always the smoothest, but he gets the job done there. And we made a trade, of course, in the offseason to bring in Landon Sims. I wanted to get somebody young in our bullpen to start developing. Sims, ground ball right back to him to get Ringifo. Keston here, a 3-2. He gets him looking on a low fastball. Looking for one more, Max Stassi. Ooh, got him to chase the fastball inside. Two and two, got him swinging. Really nice inning for Landon Sims, who also has a chance to make this roster. Four run game in the ninth, base is empty, a blast to left from Jeremy Ironman, and that is gone. Jeremy Ironman is a third baseman, 28 years old, can also play a little short. Doesn't really have a major strength right now in his skill set, but that was a nice way to end the game, although we do lose. The big event of the spring training stream was to get our first chance to see Joe Michael in action. And that's the glove that he has by default. I like it. And Michael did unfortunately make his spring training debut in a game I simulated, so I didn't get to have the first pitches with him, but this is the first spring training start. Facing Christian Yelich, three and two. The lefty misses low and walks Yelich. And that's the number one concern with Joe Michael at this point. He has tremendous strikeout upside. He is an 82 overall at 18 years old, but if he has a weakness, it is his control. This is tapped softly to Madrigal at third base. Michael picks up his first out of spring training. 
That'll bring up William Contreras, who sends one deep to right field, into the corner, and that's extra bases. Scoring Yelich, Contreras into second with a double. Tough first inning, trying to get Adamas. He strikes him out on the changeup. Michael already a 74K per nine rating. That's one of his best overall ratings. And then he strikes out Rowdy Telez to finish off the first. So a walk and a double. How would he respond bottom of the second inning? Facing Tyrone Taylor. Does he go? Yes, he does on the high fastball. Michael can hit triple digits, it says. That one was at 99. That fastball at 98. But typically, it's around 97, 98 miles per hour. Let's take a break to go to some offense now. Christian Arroyo set to be the starting second baseman. And he hooks one deep into left field. That's down at the base of the fence. Arroyo into second, sliding in safely. And next up, last year's MVP. Launching one to right field and deep. It's Nick Gordon with a spring training two-run homer. Gordon was a huge addition for us last year, and I can't wait to see how he takes on this season. Bottom three, Oakland leads, but a sharp single to right. Puts a man on for the Brewers. Yelich pulls it down the line. Hernandez gives chase, and this one is gone. Joe Michael having a rough first couple innings here in spring training. Bases empty. Two strikes on Kevin Newman. Line drive right field. When they made contact, it was solid contact. Initially, the hope was that I would have Michael in the bigs right away because he's a generational prospect. The feedback I got convinced me to have him more so starting at double A and him not playing great here initially kind of reinforces the need for him to continue developing although his ratings are already in a really nice spot. The strikeout stuff is there. He's already fooling big league hitters and getting strikeouts with a really good fastball. The issue is when contact is made. Top four, Aaron Don sent the other way. Don is somebody else I'd like to see at the big league level, but he has some pretty big holes in his game, especially facing lefties. Fourth inning, Michael gives up a high drive to right field. Hernandez makes the catch against the fence, but another one hit very well. Jackson Churio, one of the top prospects for the Brewers, chopper to third. Madrigal gets him, a better fourth inning for Joe Michael as he ends his first start later in the fifth two one seth brown big cut waves at the 12-6 curveball and with a two two count same pitch around the same location same swing timing same results two down here's soderstrom lifted the deep right field this one is gone Tyler Soderstrom showed up last year late in the season and immediately became one of our best power threats. He hit 10 homers in 53 games. Somebody else who played well last year is Ken Waldachuk, and I think that he's carved out a, a spot in this rotation for the coming year. Aaron Don, deep run into the gap. He gets to it. Great speed there in center field. The arm is his main weakness. Yeah, Waldachuk came into this game, and again, the contact was just hard every time. Kevin Newman, down the line, a fair ball. Waldachuk didn't come in and dominate or anything. He made 37 uh, appearances last year and did a really good job. We go back to Aaron Don, again facing lefties, and that is a weakness of his we have to work on, unable to leave the infield here. Waldachuk, bottom of the sixth inning. Lefties continue to hit him pretty hard. Aaron Don to the right center gap. Gets there in time. Here is Luis Urias. And that's hammered to deep left field. Now Gordon on the move, and he can't get there in time. Extra bases for Urias. That'll bring up the nine hitting Isaac Collins with two down and two on. He sharply drives it through the infield 
106 exit velocity. Over aggressiveness on the base paths does end the inning for the Brewers, but it just wasn't a good showing for really any of these starting pitching options. Teoscar Hernandez, tie game. Not anymore. Deep left and gone off of Aaron Ashby. Yeah, Teoscar is ready for the regular season, it appears. How about Shea Langoliers? Third year as our starting catcher in the franchise. Base hit the other way. Still waiting for him to take that next step as a hitter. We get Aaron Don, two on. He faces a lefty yet again. And taps it softly up the middle. And Don beats out the throw. That did pull the first baseman off the bag. But they will give him a base hit. I knew it was unlikely that Don would make the team through spring training, but I wanted the reference point to see how he could handle big league pitching with where he is right now. Base is loaded. Logan Davidson, line drive to second base. Hit it pretty well, but right at somebody. Ken Wall the Chuck stays in the game. Another sharp one up the middle. Brewers just coming to hit in this game. So we'll bring in one of our relief additions in Jose LeClerc. We brought in Arroyo and Soroka, and then the rest of our targets were relievers. And LeClerc comes in to finish off the seventh inning, opens the eighth, and gives up a long home run to Luis Urias. Everybody getting hit hard here by the Brewers. He stays in the game. Isaac Collins, two for three. Strikes out, swinging. And the game tied as we go top of the ninth. Here is Tyler Soderstrom, lefty, lefty. And a high drive to right center field. This will split the gap. It's got carry, and this one is gone. A two-home run day for Tyler Soderstrom. And he puts the A's in front. Later in the inning, Don would hit once again. Another lefty to face and a good slider away with two strikes. So Don didn't really have a lot of great opportunities here in the first couple games. We get Victor Gonzalez, who comes over from the Dodgers in the Rule 5 draft. A chance to close this one out. He opens against Sal Fralick, who puts down a surprising bunt and Geloff can't get him in time. So the leadoff man is on. Next up, Luke Voigt. Sharp single right field. Two on, nobody out. A one-run game. Here is Edwin Rios. Nice pitch inside to get ahead. Two strikes. Got him with a fastball. Gonzalez gets that all-important first out. And now Tyler Black. 2-1 in there to even the counts. Gonzalez, pitch 19. Ground ball, pass Gonzalez. Davidson trying to end it and not in time. Runners at the corners, two down. And he's going to have to pitch to Garrett Mitchell. And go into the 20s here pitch count wise. 0-1. Swung through it, fastball makes it 0-2. Did he go? He does, and Victor Gonzalez ends the game. Somehow, we win this game despite how hard the Brewers hit the ball from start to finish. Unfortunately, it wasn't this terrific showcase for Joe Michael, but you got to see where he is both strength and weakness-wise at this point. And that's also why Aaron Don is here. I want him to continue working on his power as a hitter, his arm as a defender, and I just want to know, with what he has, can he hit big league pitching? There's his best swing to this point, a sharp base hit. He does hit righties a lot better than lefties, and unfortunately got a ton of lefty-lefty matchups early on. But the plan is still to begin him at AAA. Continue working on his arm in the field, hopefully getting stronger as a hitter. And we're going to stay patient because the ceiling is high, but not until those weaknesses are addressed. Here's Christian Arroyo. This looks like the double he hit earlier. Curveball inside, pulled the left. One run scores, a second waved around. Safe. Arroyo does have some power. Again, he's a well-rounded player. 
He could even play at short, but I just don't think his defense is great for that spot. Here is Zach Jackson. He unfortunately played poorly in year one, got hurt in year two. So year three is hopefully a fresh beginning for him. That's a base hit into center. Here in the seventh, he gives up a couple base runners, but two down, trying to close down the inning. 2-1 to Cronenworth, and it's lifted for Connor Capel in center field. Jackson should be at the top of this bullpen. Here's Tyler Soderstrom. Why would I be showing him? Because the ball just jumps off his bat. And he is ready for his first big league year as a full-time player. Mason Miller in the game. He's somebody else who could be in the bullpen, could be in the rotation. A couple base runners in the ninth. So we bring in Domingo Acevedo, last year's closer. Here's just a tough kind of unfair situation. You inherit two runners, nobody down. Tommy Pham falls behind. The count runs full. He reaches for one. Brown out at second. Double play. Two big outs. After a walk, runners at the corners. Eli White. Popped him up for Davidson at short. And Acevedo gets the save. Nicely done. And the A's win 2-0. I wanted to make sure I got a little more Joe Michael in this video as well. So I played a second game with him in player lock. 13 strikeouts in 13 innings. A 5-5-4 ERA. Here is his third start. Tim Anderson, now a Dodger, pulls one to deep left center field. And almost a diving play in center. Michael could have really used that one. Then facing one of the best hitters in the league, you got Freddie Freeman. One and two from Michael. Struck him out. 98 on the fastball. Here is Mookie Betts. 3-1, base open. Probably should have just pitched around him here. That's a base hit into center. And the Dodgers get after Michael in the first inning. But then facing Will Smith, another wild swing. You can tell the stuff is there. But control is a bit of an issue. And just the contact he's giving up is concerning at this stage. But this is only his first spring training action. He will begin at double A. And he won't go up until he plays really well down there. And he might be on the fast track to the, the major leagues this season. But we've got to see it. It's not just enough to have the ratings. You want to see him dominate those lower levels of competition. And he might have a Steven Strasburg style run to his major league career. And remember, Strasburg made his debut in early June. It's all up to performance going forward for Joe Michael. But spring training did show that maybe you got to stay patient even though he's a generational prospect. He strikes out Freddie Freeman for a second time and then does get Mookie Betts on a sharp ground ball. Trying to put together at least a stronger outing than his one earlier. And hangs the curveball for Will Smith. A run will score. The third allowed in three innings. He'd allow a couple more base runners to reach. And here's Chris Taylor. He lines one to right center field. This is going to be trouble. One will score for sure. And they'll wave a second runner around. And Michael allows five through these three innings. Seth Brown came in later in the game. Blast off to right field. Yeah, we hit the ball hard. Our opponents hit the ball hard. I don't know if they have a new baseball for year three of this franchise. Everything's getting smoked. Aaron Don against the lefty. Can't line it over shorts. Dodgers take this one. And that's going to wrap up everything that I thought was relevant from the live stream. But now we got some more work to do. I've gone ahead and adjusted our starting rotation and the lineup to hopefully get more playing time for guys who really need it and didn't get it in the first two weeks or so of spring training. I really want to see more of Luis Medina, Forrest Whitley, and Landon Sims. 
all young pitchers that could help us perhaps right now. And for the offense, you know, Lawrence Butler, we haven't talked about him a whole lot, but he's somebody else that we'd like to see at the big league level. You got Joshua Baez, who did have some good moments last year, and his hitting numbers, I think, leave you wanting to see if he can take it a, a step further this season. So I want to see us hopefully get a lot more playing time for the young guys for better samples when I make these roster decisions. So we are going to simulate through handful of these games but we're also going to get into some player lock and we're going to return to Darrell Ernais he is the highest rated shortstop in our organization right now it's a relatively thin position and there are some guys who have the flexibility to play there but do they have the flexibility to do that at a high level defensively not as much as Ernais all his ratings are there in the 80s his potential is only a C but the defense is there. He has some contact skill, some speed. I think he's at least going to be platooning there. And we'll see if Davidson makes the team. He's only hitting 116. This isn't uh, all that promising. And you do have former shortstop for us, Aledmus Diaz, available in free agency. So, like, yeah, that's an option if you just want a guy to play short. But... It's not that important for us. We want to get young guys playing time. We want to develop. And Diaz doesn't really accomplish any of our goals outside of just having a capable starting player there. I'm not expecting us to win a bunch of games here in year three. So my focus is more so going to be taking a chance on some of these young guys. And here is their nice at short. Perfect. His defense there just really stands out. And it's over his head. He almost had it. But Ernais has hit 250, 662 OPS. That's nothing special. He's probably like the nine hitter in the lineup if he does end up playing. On the ground, hit softly. And he should beat this out. They got the one. All right, now we can get a chance at short, hopefully. Akil Badu with the bases loaded. And that should be a pretty routine play. Air nice. Right on the money. Two on. Nobody down. And that's a base hit to right field. Air nice comes through. Will hold the runner at third. But he loads the bases in the seventh. And here's Zach Geloff. So with Zach, he only was listed as third base in this game. I looked up his baseball reference page. He's also played second and center. But I didn't give him the center fielder eligibility with us because uh, it was like one game. So he can play third and second. Walks in a run. And then you have Jeremy Ironman, who's got some pretty good numbers, also competing for that third base spot. 0-2. Oh, and he lines it into left field. Let's hold and now we got Teoscar Hernandez at the plate. The graphic hasn't updated yet, but he strikes out. And now we get Arroyo, who's only hitting 193. Softly. And they're going to get two easily. And now I'd like to pitch a little bit with Forrest Whitley. Didn't give us the nice graphic of his stats here right away. But he's a 68 overall. The ratings, you know, they're in the 50s. So we might keep him at AAA. He has already used up a couple of his options. And we have gotten him a little bit of big league experience that didn't go uh, phenomenally well. But I'd like to get a chance to pitch with him here. We take on the Angels again. So I'm sorry for the lack of opponent variety. This is a little repetitive. There you go. The fastball gets by David Fletcher. He can be a tough guy to strike out, but Whitley gets in with the slider. In play. Here's their nice at short. Making that look easy. There you go. Keep the curveball down. A risky pitch to start off there against Trout. Got him to extend. 
Wow, that was a really good pitch. One and two. Held back somehow. Out in front, he strikes out Trout. That was a phenomenal inning. Oh, he went around on that. It couldn't even be fielded by Shea. One, two. Missing high to Renfro. Couple strikeouts already for Whitley. And we'll take it, even though the pitch really wasn't good. Oh boy, Rendon, please don't go 450 this time. Let's try to keep the ball away. Wow, is his slider up that good? He's fooling everybody, 0-2. Fastball gets the job done. They're still chasing outside the zone. Let's see if the slider gets the job done then. Perfectly done. You know, we've spent a couple years developing players. So many guys you could consider close. I think this is just the year where you play a bunch of them and you see who sticks. You play a lot of guys, get a huge sample, and, you know, you count on a few of them really taking off and a few of them struggling. And it gives you an idea of who you can count on and who you can't. The entire uh, first two years of the series was about, you know, building up guys who have a chance. And now I want to see what these guys can do given that chance. Keston Hira. A little more patience than the rest of this order facing Whitley. 3-1. Fouled off. Ooh. He just struck out like uh, Hanser Alberto did against the Twins a week ago or so. Whenever that was. It hit him and he still swung. Tap to the right side. How about these innings for Whitley? Making a strong case for the big league roster. And that curveball, he's feeling it right now. Down in the zone, throwing it over for a strike. One and two. Fletcher pokes one over second base. He'll do that. His breaking stuff, though, is under control. I'm impressed. That's not a bad miss. Fastball is on point as well. Just didn't get a swing or a call there. And he goes 3-2. Now let's see if he can get Trout once again. All right, he missed inside. Ooh, nice play at third. Doubling up Trout, finishing off the fourth inning. What I love, too, is he's not falling behind in very many counts. Quick work of Renfro in the fifth. Strike one to Suarez. We're only at 54 pitches right now. Oh, come on. And he's falling behind Suarez. Very few base runners allowed. But he will walk him here. There you go, strike one. Like every time, we can throw that off-speed first pitch and he just continually nails the zone. 0-2 oh, on Rengifo. That's a really good changeup. Like even the stuff that's missing, like it's a competitive pitch. Struck him out! Five innings of one hit ball is what we just saw from Forrest Whitley. That's about as strong as you can ask a pitcher to look. We brought in Tanner Scott through free agency as well. Another veteran reliever. 2-0 lead here in the ninth. Here is Joe Adele hitting just 0-7-1. That didn't look good. That's a three-pitch strikeout. Your attention, please. We've gone from everybody hitting the ball hard to contact not even being made. Must have gone back to the old baseball. Yep, two quick strikes on Ben Gamble. Scott's trying to work quick. 
He's got places to be. Strike three. I wonder if we can finish this inning without even throwing a ball. Well, not anymore. It was seven in a row until that one. There you go. Davidson playing good D at third base. Finishes it off. The A's are victorious behind a dominant pitching effort. Jeez, I didn't realize Whitley had nine strikeouts in five innings. In a regular season start, he would have been left out there. Let's do a player lock game here with Zach Geloff. He is somebody who hasn't yet made his major league debut in this series. 70 overall, 25 years old. And he's had some really good moments here in the spring. Hits lefties pretty well, but a, a decent, well-rounded hitter. His defense, you know, is just okay right now. It has room to get better. But somebody who could be a future starting third baseman for us. I feel like shortstop and third base are two spots we should consider looking into the draft with, considering we'll have another early pick. And those are two spots that don't have the most impressive depth. You have some solid, like, B potential prospects. But it looks like we got Geloff here getting some action in at second base. So he can play the same positions as Nick Madrigal. And he will just do it with a little more power upside, whereas Madrigal has more contact upside. So given the way he's playing, he'll have a chance to make this roster when I cut it down pretty soon. And I'll do that in this video. Trying to see if we can make a 26-man roster that uh, allows us to hopefully be a nuisance to other teams while developing plenty of young talent. My goal this year is for us to hopefully become a 70-win team and get closer to actually being able to compete and just be more of a, a an annoying team to face, basically. Struck out on that changeup. But now we got two on, and there's a lot of speed on the base paths. Ooh, I finally got something high. They've been pitching me low to, with everybody. Popped him up. Change up inside. With Geloff, I just don't know what he offers as a major league hitter yet with his ratings like 50s for contact and then 40s for power. Like, will that translate well playing the real deal? We're probably going to find out at some point this year. We'll just see if it's right away. He's hit the ball well, though, in spring, and that's all you can ask here right now. He's facing a pretty good pitcher here, Clayton Kershaw. Ooh, 12-6. Hitting lefties is more of his specialty, so this is kind of a big at-bat. Missing outside, and Kershaw has missed three away. Three and one. Do we get something to hit this time? Geloff could use it to show what he can do. Ooh, fouled back. They showed the swing timing on there twice. Yeah, I think that was late timing. The first time it said good. Three and two. Struck him out. One more chance for Geloff. That's going to right. Again, a little late on the swing, but it drops in for a base hit. Something else you like about Geloff is the 79 speed is pretty solid for a third baseman. So I feel like he's got a chance to develop into a very well-rounded player. I think he can be average at, you know, defense, speed, hitting contact, or power, all of it. But what is he going to bring to the table that gets him, you know, above average at anything. I guess that's the unknown with him right now. That's going to be an easy play. Ooh, rough outing here for Luis Medina. Six earned runs, three walks, and under two innings as the spring is almost done. We'll finish it off with a player lock game with Joshua Baez. He is only 21 years old, and he is going to make the big league team after doing a fine job in 21 games last season. I'd like to see a little bit more and get him a bit more development this season. It's hard, though. Some of these guys, they could definitely benefit from regular playing time at AAA, 
They're good enough to be like our fourth or fifth outfielder, but it's like, do you want them on the bench or do you want them playing every day at AAA, possibly getting better? And there might be, you know, some shuffling of the roster and moving guys up and down just to maybe get a mix of every day starting at AAA, but then also having, you know, a couple weeks here and there to show what you can do off the bench in the bigs. We've had some injuries, though, in this series, and that can always shake things up and give guys roles. It's led to some guys making debuts already. So, Baez is one of those guys where if any outfielder gets hurt, he immediately gets the playing time. His fielding ratings aren't all that great, but his throwing ratings are. He's got a strong arm, and perhaps we're going to see it on display here. Unfortunately, they took him out of the game before I would have liked, so we'll finish things off here. We got Jeremy Ironman, who has hit really well, has uh, only like 25 plate vision. That's going to hold him back. It says 27, but he's hit the ball really well here throughout spring training and can play a little shortstop, so there's that flexibility. He's outplaying Logan Davidson. He strikes out. And then Lawrence Butler, unfortunately, has struggled ever since year one. Year one was a, a negative war season for him, but he showed a little promise and then struggled more so in his second season, spending much of it at AAA, which is where he's set to begin this year. Not many innings here for Landon Sims, but they've been great innings, all three of them. And I feel like he will start out on the big league roster. I'm trying to work on this bullpen. It's going to be something I focus on in the draft. I have more interest this year in targeting the top closers. Maybe not with our first pick, but I'd like to be in position with our second pick to come away with one. Possibly. But Landon Sims would be the youngest member, I believe, of our bullpen. And he's falling behind Randall Gritchick here, 3-0. Oh. And that is clipping the inside. Gritchick stunned by that. 3-1. and one. Again, clipping the inside edge. Let's go. 3-2, and two, slider away. Got him! What a comeback! Sims. 2-2 two and two facing Franchi Cordero gets him looking on the change. I tried to set up the bullpen in a way that would get him more innings, but for whatever reason, it just didn't want to play him. I made him the top middle reliever. It's hard to manage spring training playing time. That's two quick strikes. Are you kidding me? Perfect pitch. One and two. We'll get it to Geloff, and it's a 1-2-3 inning regardless. Let's get Aaron Don one more at bat. Might be the last time we hit with him here at the big league level for a little while. We're going to stay patient, though. Ah, that was ugly. Good timing on the swing, but Don is retired. Almost down the line with Denzel Clark. He'll be starting at AAA in the outfield alongside Aaron Don. And he's getting closer. Just not producing well enough here in the spring. That's a rocket to left field. And Clark will end his spring training with a well-hit double. Let's try to go to third on that. No, let's, let's not do that. Shea Langoliers. Yeah, last year he improved some of his efficiency numbers, losing a little bit of the power. So it really wasn't a year for his offense to develop. I'm hoping this year, year three, ends up being a little bit different. He's hit some home runs, but his slugging is still nothing special. If we check out the numbers on him quick, we've had, you know, 380 last year, 410 the year before. His on-base numbers are not very good. They're well below average, but he is flashing a little bit of power. That's a grounder to the right side, advancing Clark. 
Yeah, I've got to get my swing dialed in again. It's just a little off right now. And then Connor Capel. Rookie of the year back in year one, but could not follow it up in year two. That's a blast to center. And that one is out of reach. Capel the second, and he'll stop there with an RBI double. And Darrell Airnides. Is he your day one shortstop? He's two for three in this game. 270, 778 OPS. I think he's doing what we want. Oh, I liked that one too. You turn on that one, I might start you with a little more conviction. That's all right. Spring training is now wrapped up for Oakland. So how do we do as a team here in spring training? Well, 25th in batting average isn't great, but 21st in runs, that seems like a bit of an improvement. How about homers? I like not seeing us there at the very bottom, 22nd. Tied for 19th in hits allowed, and then in runs allowed, 22nd. So my expectations for this year are not going to be very high, but I want to start hopefully finding some of those players that we think can be with us, you know, going forward for many years. And here's how things went down in spring training. Shea Langoliers had 30 hits and hit 326. That's really impressive for him. Nick Gordon, 339, five homers. Madrigal, 321. Ernai is at 266. Baez and Ironman checked in with good averages as well. Justin Dean wasn't bad. Galoff at 257. The newcomer Arroyo, he wasn't uh, phenomenal or anything. Soderstrom had his struggles, showed off some power. Seth Brown struggled. Aaron Don really struggled. I know he faced lefties a ton, but he also only hit 194 off of righties. Bellinger, Anderson, Davidson, Clark, Butler, really low averages for those guys. Here are the home run numbers. And for the pitching, Soroka, 31 innings, 26 strikeouts. Managed to bring down the ERA a little bit. And ended up in a pretty good spot overall going into the new season. Luis Medina, he had some struggles, a negative war, along with Denelson Lamette and Jose Leclerc. Ken Waldachuk, a 254 ERA and a 4.77 FIP. Wow, the strikeout numbers on him are extremely low right now. Alex Reyes, 11 innings, 12 strikeouts. Didn't get to play with him. Forrest Whitley, 10 innings, 15 strikeouts, and just one earned run. Joe Michael ends up going 16 and two-third innings, striking out 19, but gave up a couple home runs and uh, wasn't great with the ball in play. So, of course, his FIP is going to be good. Because that takes out everything that is put in play. And it's looking at home runs, strikeouts, walks. I think hit by pitches might be in there. When the ball's not in play, it tends to be good. But when the ball is in play, it's been ugly. The game a .4 war. Just because of those strikeouts, it looks like. And .4 war was third best on the team with Forrest Whitley. They just got there. Well, I guess they both got there with their strikeouts, but... Whitley only allowed the one run, whereas Michael allowed 13. So we got to cut this roster down to 26. As I've said, Joe Michael will open his career at the double-A level. Aaron Don will continue to develop at triple-A. Shintaro Fujinami's 15 innings of scoreless ball in the spring will keep him his spot in the rotation. The fifth starting spot is going to be filled by Forrest Whitley, who had the phenomenal start today. He's already had a couple of his options used before, so I'd like to see him begin on the big league roster this year to see if we can avoid using that final option. While I'm intrigued with Medina, he will open as one of the top pitchers at AAA. 
Ryan Cusick is going to join him, as will Mason Miller. Kyle Muller had a really good spring, but he's not going to make the 26-man roster. Logan Davidson didn't show us enough. We'll send down Denzel Clark, Lawrence Butler, Connor Capel. He was on the active roster all last year, but now Rule 5 pickup Justin Dean can be sent back down. Jeremy Ironman is not going to make the cut. JT Ginn will go down as well. And to make our final roster spot, we are going to trade Denelson Lamette to the Baltimore Orioles for prospect Jonathan Bagley, who will play down in the lower levels. Here is our starting rotation going into year three of the franchise. Soroka, Blackburn, Waldachuk, Fujinami, and Forrest Whitley. Gunnar Hoagland and Luke Weaver will be inning eaters in the bullpen right away. Victor Gonzalez. I guess this second setup role doesn't really get a lot of opportunities, so I have him up here instead. Zach Jackson, Tanner Scott, Alex Reyes, Landon Sims, Jose LeClerc, and Domingo Acevedo. And we're going to open here with this lineup. We do have Darrell Ernais, the day one shortstop this season. Nick Madrigal playing second base and Christian Arroyo playing third because his arm is stronger than Madrigal. So we'll flip flop those two. On the bench, we have Brian Anderson who can play in the outfield a bit. He can play a lot of roles. And then Joshua Baez, as the top outfield bench player, and Zach Geloff, who can fill in at third and second in a pinch, and I'd just like to see more of him. I might shake things up and add a fourth bench player that is pretty thin, but right now we're healthy, and I think we can start the season with that setup, and then we'll let things shake out in the bullpen and see how this goes. It's, it's a nine-man bullpen. There's a lot here. But that's how I want to open the season, and it, it might change. So there you have it. That's what we have going into the newest season of the Oakland A's franchise. Hope you guys are ready for year three. I'm excited to see this team, and I'm hoping we can take a step this year. We got some exciting prospects to be patient for along the way. Joe Michael's going to be playing against double A competition soon. You got guys like Elliot Hughes continuing to develop and Cam Cope as well, who's a 70 right now. There is some hope in this organization. We've added more in the two drafts that we've done. Well, that's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think of our opening day lineup going into the newest season. And we'll open year three against the Miami Marlins and Sandy Alcantara. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.